Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, we're going to focus on the NASDAQ Composite and the Russell 2000 today. And I call it the House of Pain because that's exactly what's going on with both of these. Pretty negative situation. Um, and then we'll take a look at uh, a couple of indicators. I want to look at the uh, high lows on the NASDAQ, look at the short-term trading index. We'll take a look at the high yield bond fund. And then uh, kind of the feature stock I want to look at is Disney uh, this week. All right, let's take a look on the screen here. You can see the Dow, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ composite. And these are the weekly views. The Dow was up 460 points, basically saved by Friday. The S&P 500 was up 34 points. And again, it was saved by Friday. And on the NASDAQ composite, it basically got almost like back to break even up 1.65 points. That was it. Kind of an interesting little pattern we got here on the weekly. Down, little up kind of bar, you know, close above the open, down, and then the same thing again. So we'll see what happens next week. All right, let's take a look and drill in and look at the uh, NASDAQ composite. I'm going to go back to this home screen. This is the weekly view we just talked about, what we were just showing. The key thing here, let me get rid of the crosshairs for a minute, is look at this support line. This was resistance, and then it became support, and then it was shattered the week before last. We closed down dramatically below that level, and then here we are the second week, this last week here. And now when I drill in and take a look, I, by the way, I mean, if I haven't talked about this before, I believe that the five waves up from March of 2020 are complete here. And I believe it completes five waves up from March of uh, 2009 on the NASDAQ also. Now, here's the channel on the daily. We've broken down out of this channel. Here's that 14,180 level I talked about. So right now we're trying to complete the third minor wave. On the NASDAQ, I've got it labeled as a minor wave, and I think I have the same thing on the Russell. A little bit different on the Dow and the S&P. But it really doesn't matter a whole lot in terms of what the initial labeling is. You can always tweak that later. But right now, we're trying to get five waves complete to finish off this third wave, and we don't have that yet. Right now, we're either, we either have wave four complete with the high, on the 26th, which was what, Wednesday? Or we are still evolving that. Now you can see how much of a pullback we've had. And I'm looking at this, the, these uh, Fibonacci relationships here, these ratios are doing a ratio of four as a percent of three. Typically what I look for as a target is 38.2 initially. We're slightly above that with the high on Wednesday. So we'll see what happens in here. We may, you know, gyrate around for another day or two. We'll see. But, you know, the wave two correction in here was only two days. We've really already gone four days or maybe maybe it, maybe it did give us two days. And maybe we're already into that fifth wave, which we'll find out Monday, Tuesday for sure. OK, so that's the NASDAQ composite. And since I'm talking about the NASDAQ composite, let me show you that house of pain a little bit, what we're talking about. This is the net of the high lows on the NASDAQ. Am I showing? Yeah, you can see that. NASDAQ high minus lows. So, we're, you know, the highs minus lows, they're being swamped by new lows, new 52-week lows. On Friday, the net was a minus 1139. Back over here on the, um, let's see, I'm trying to, it does, it's not going to blow it up here. On the 24th, it was a minus 1746, and you can see how these readings compare to the low we got in March of 2020, minus 2093. So we're getting a lot of damage being done, a lot of, a lot of pain in the NASDAQ. Okay, the uh, Russell 2000 ETF. I'm going to take a look at that, and I want to go to this scenario right here. That's where I've got all the analysis complete. So again, five waves up with the high on November 7th, the week of November 7th. This is a weekly view. Similar to the NASDAQ composite, look how we broke down below that key support area here. 
I had drawn this dotted line, and again, it's kind of like just trying to fit it into the lows that I'm seeing. And then we shattered it on the week before last, just like the NASDAQ did. And then here we are down, closing down below. This was of the four major indices I take a look at almost every day. This was the only one that was down for the week, okay, down 1.74. So it continues to be, say, what, four weeks in a row now. But I don't think we have five waves to finish off that third wave. I just don't think it's complete. I know we got a little reversal back up on Friday, a uh, little, you know, push, push higher. But we've had plenty of those kind of candles that just do nothing but fail. Okay. So, you know, I'm looking for the wave count to get, to get finished, and then we'll see where we go. Uh, you know, after you finish off the third, you're going to get a corrective pattern for a fourth. But right now, I just don't see that the third wave is complete. Let's take a look at the short-term trading index. See what it's telling us. I want to go right here, and I don't want to look at the weekly. This is what I want to look at. So I've got dash lines at the 2 level, at the 0.5 level. And we're not getting any kind of capitulation. There's no fear selling. There's nothing going on. If we really did, we would have closes well up into this range and trading a lot higher, kind of like up even above three and, and much higher. OK, but where do we close on Friday? 7.705. And the 10 day moving average is sitting at 0.98. When the 10 day starts to get above 1.5, then I start to like, hmm, are we getting into a short term bottom? We're not even close. Okay, so I, you know, we keep an eye on this, we look at it. Uh, and uh, right now, it's just not signaling any, anything like that in terms of capitulation. And then of course, we always look at a lot of other things too, like, you know, the put to call ratio and, and the high yield bond fund. Well, it bounced up with the market on Friday, up 24 cents, but, you know, pretty strong downdraft. And this second trend line right here, to me, this is indicating a major breakdown of a top. Okay, so here's what we're looking at. You can see what's going on. Down 76 cents for, for the last week, but this was the weekly bar right here. And this is the, uh, the topping pattern. This looks like a big head and shoulders pattern. Here's a shoulder, here's the head, here's the right shoulder, and within the head, you have another head and shoulders pattern. Okay, so that that's not unusual. I mean, to have something like that, you know, it's like, you know, totally, it's not, I wouldn't say it's common, but it's not unheard of, okay? So watching to see what kind of breakdown we get, but basically, what is this telling us? It's telling us the market is saying it's risk off. Okay, it's not risk on. All right, so let's take a look at Disney. Okay, here is the Walt Disney Company, ticker symbol DIS. And this is a weekly view. Um, I've got a long range, long range picture of this. I believe cycle wave five has finished. It was really, really interesting over here that, you know, we had this in, in uh, and I cycle wave five, primary wave five. And, uh, you know, when we look at, well, the five primary waves within that last cycle wave, but within cycle wave three, this was really, really interesting in terms of all these gyrations really turn into a sideways triangle for wave four. We burst out of it for a beautiful five wave move up to complete wave three. And then here's what's been going on ever since. So now, since this top that occurred, back in March of 2021, so what, you know, 11, 10, 11 months ago. Here's what's happened since then. Now, we've, I've been looking for first five wave move down, and you know, we've broken down out of this initial channel, which is exactly what I expect on a third wave to come down. I just don't think this third wave is complete yet in here, so it's very similar to what we're seeing on the Dow uh, as no surprise since Disney is a Dow stock and Dow Industrial stock. So here's what we're looking at. And I think we've got a uh, little fourth wave pattern going on. I think we had one, two, and then a, a real strong wave three, which again, classic that you're getting a gap in the wave three. Here's a little wave four, and then we're looking to finish this off here, all within this fifth wave. Okay, that's what we're trying to do. I think we have one more push down. 
Now it's interesting what this did in here, this gap. Actually, let me go to the weekly. I think I can see the gap a little bit better. This last week came right down and we almost completely closed this gap that was created. When was that created? That was created the week of November 8th, 2020. So that gap's been hanging out there for a long time. Well, it almost completely got filled with the price action of what happened here this last week. So again, I think we have a little bit more to go. I think maybe one more move down and we get some divergence. We'll see and then we'll finish that move and we'll see where we go from there. But that's what's going on with Disney. Uh, and um, I think that's it for this weekend. Everyone have a great weekend. Stay warm if you're in the United States. We got a lot of cold, cold weather on tap. And uh, I know you're getting blasted on the East Coast, that's for sure. So if you felt like the video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber to the channel, hit that little subscriber button. And if you'd like more of this kind of information on a daily basis, head on over to joehenches.net. Check out the website. Check out the uh, membership. Everyone have a great week. We'll talk to you on the next video.